when you're trying to bring in, you know, recruit students, because uh, mm -hmm. that's something that every school has to do, what are some of the things you run into as far as uh, forms of resistance or, or misunderstandings or myths that, that maybe parents have that, that might make it difficult for them to enroll in, in a program like that, like yours? There's certainly things that you want to help reassure parents about mm -hmm. and hear, hear their concerns. We are in an interesting position with both Pine and Humanitas in that we are so oversubscribed with interest that we mm. don't really have to persuade too much. I think mm -hmm. I spent $20 on advertising for Humanitas mm. in the entirety because there isn't a lot of innovative programs in the city. Okay. So we have a lot of interest. Pine deliberately has a quite low key website that's sort of like, <laughs> don't even worry. Like there's not, um, so it's, it's more about looking for the parents that will be a good fit. And that doesn't mm -hmm. mean any particular kind of parents. We're really passionate at both spaces about a diversity of, of community, a diversity of parents and a diversity of students income diversity, religious diversity, cultural diversity, that we that this kind of education is not just for one kind of family. Mm -hmm. It's for all kind of, of students and families. But the fit with families is families who are choosing these values because they like them, because they mm -hmm. align with them and because they want to learn more. They're not choosing it because they hate what's over there. They're right. <laughs> choosing it because they like what's over here and not because they hate what's over there. And that's really mm. what we're looking for in families. However, we try really hard to reassure parents, to give them the information, to not be prickly about people having mm. questions because that's normal and natural. And even for families who've been around for a long time, it's going, there's going to be moments. We always talk about this roller coaster of, of going through <laughs> democratic schooling where it's like, oh, yeah. honeymoon period, it's lovely, it's amazing. And then you go down and you're like, oh, this part's not working for me. Oh, did I make a bad choice? What's going mm -hmm. on? And we try and hold space for them when they're in those things to go, what do you need? What, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Like we have a lot of communication for our families. Uh, we have an open door policy. Right. So our parents can be here as much as they like. They could be here every day for seven years if they wanted to be, as long as the children themselves didn't go, actually, you're interfering with what mm -hmm. we are needing. Mm -hmm. But we have parents around a lot. We have parent chats where we once a week get together and talk about things and say, mm -hmm. um, at the moment, it's not once a week, it's once a term for the whole community to go, this is our parent chat space. But we have once a week where the parents have their own chats and coffee mornings and things mm. we have a lot of older parents who've been here for a while who can go oh yes I remember feeling like that let me mm. help um, and our staff are very available <laughs> mm -hmm. they may be a little mm -hmm. bit too available but they do spend a lot of time <laughs> reassuring and emailing and texting and we're very open in our communication we have you know weekly newsletters and we have folios of what they're doing and photos and we really we try and tell our parents constantly ask the question, even if it seems silly, ask the mm -hmm. question about why they're doing that thing. And you may not love the answer, but there will be an answer. Mm. And so a lot, I think that's very countercultural because in a lot of schools, teachers are kind of like, okay, bye, there's the door, close the door. And this is my little <laughs> classroom space. And this is what I do. But it's also quite hard as a teacher to go oh they're gonna maybe like I've had new teachers come to pine and think oh, there's parents around all the time they're gonna be judging me and judging what I oh, do right. <laughs> and we just have to reassure them that they're amazing and the parents are not going to be judging them and if they are judging them then maybe this isn't the right space for them it's, a, <laughs> it's really a partnership you can't yeah, like par yeah. parents are the number one right that Parents are the number one educators of their children. They're the people mm. that make it happen. We're just on the sidelines cheering them on and doing some things to help. Right on, right on. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's in contrast to some other schools that take more of a, like, arm's length kind of yeah. <laughs> attitude. So. Oh, it's 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 sad. It, it, it was really, really awful to watch that happen more so than it ever has in Australia during COVID, mm. just when oh, it right. became... It became, because we didn't have as many lockdowns as other places in Brisbane, we had some, but as a result of that, there were even like kindergarten programs where parents weren't even allowed to come into the door to settle their right. young person. And you're like, you've got to leave your five-year-old like a hundred meters at the gate. Like it's, 
was terrible. I wouldn't have been yeah. able to cope at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.